Right, this is kind of uncharted territory for my channel, but we've gotten to the point where the NBA trade deadline is literally five days away and I'm gonna have to start making videos like this if I want to really fit everything in and make sure I get you guys as much news as I possibly can. And what I mean by that is, I'm sure you can tell from the title, in this video I'm gonna be covering multiple trade scenarios and updating you on very significant players around the league that may or may not be traded, more specifically Andre Gudala, Drew Holiday, and of course Derek Rose. Before we get started guys, I uploaded a video to my NFL channel, it's called Microphone phone it's a video call about why 31 players were drafted before lamar jackson it's great work so if you are an nfl fan be sure to check out microphone if you're new to the channel you watch a lot of my content though but you're not subscribed yet please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and turn on my notifications so you can always stay up to date with the news i bring you i do this as a full-time job now guys so you could best believe that i will consistently bring you reliable news finally if you want to see my workout routine check me out on tiktok it's at the flight mic and my instagram is at the flight mic as as well the first update i'm gonna give you guys is gonna be super freaking brief man but we all heard rumors surrounding derrick rose potentially being traded to the lakers potentially being traded to the sixers and well it seems like more recently according to rick buker of bleacher report that the detroit pistons are more likely to keep derrick rose at this point than to trade him somewhere else. And to quote Rick Buecher, it said, another potential backcourt target for both LA teams is Detroit Pistons point guard, Derrick Rose. But sources to both Rose and the Pistons don't see a move as likely. With Rose playing at a near all-star level and signed through next season on a modest two-year $15 million deal, it would most likely take a first round pick and a quality young player to pry him away from the Detroit Pistons. So if you're the Lakers, you're probably going to give, uh, that's pretty much hinting to you, yo, the only way you're getting Derrick Rose is if you give us a first round pick and Kyle Kuzma, which is the only young player that you're willing to par part with. Currently, Derrick Rose is averaging 18.9 points, 2.6 rebounds, and 5.9 assists on the season in 43 games. He's shooting 50% from the field, 32% from three, and 87% from the the free throw line detroit isn't really going anywhere this season they're 17 and 33 blake griffin is out for the season so i would think they would do their best to sell as much as they can because what value is derrick rose going to be to you if you're not going to make a push for the playoffs and you're planning on trading andre drummond anyways let me know in the comment section do you think the detroit pistons should go ahead and trade derrick rose or do you think that they're making the right move by keeping Derrick Rose. Now, the next bit of info I wanted to bring you guys is Drew Holiday. And I got a report from Shams Karanya of The Athletic that Denver and Miami are amongst the interested teams in Drew Holiday and several others are expected to emerge. According to sources, multiple teams told The Athletic that the Pelicans are listening to trade calls for anyone on the roster, but their asking price remains high on Drew Holiday. Reports also claim that the Pelicans are unlikely to part ways with the former All-Star, and still, despite this, the Nuggets and Heat should take their chances to try to acquire Holiday should the right deal come into place. If you ask me, both of these teams are likely, are probably the most qualified to make such a deal, and I'll tell you why. The New Orleans Pelicans are a young up-and-coming team. Yes, they have a plethora of great older talent like Drew Holiday that could be a veteran leader should they try to make a push for the playoffs. And they also have some quality young talent in Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, Josh Hart, Lonzo Ball. All in all, I think this team could definitely make a push for the playoffs. But you don't want to possibly dismantle your roster if you're trying to make said push. As a matter of fact, it doesn't seem very logical or likely to trade Drew Holiday at this point because any trade that you could make for Drew Holiday this season, you could easily make at the end of the season. If you want some young assets, like, I don't know, I don't know who the Miami Heat will be willing to part with, but if you want young assets from either the Nuggets or the Miami Heat, which both teams have to part with, you would most likely be looking for such a trade 
in the off season where you could in integrate those players those new young players onto your team at a point where they could actually be involved in training camp learn the plays it's not supposed to this is not a move that the pelicans want to make in the middle of the season as they're trying to make a push for the playoffs they just got zion back and as a matter of fact there's another report that i also got from shams karanya of the athletic and it says that the pelicans are unlikely to part ways with Drew Holiday and the report says throughout the season there has been speculation among teams about Holiday eventually wanting a trade out of New Orleans however league sources told The Athletic that Holiday has made clear that he's happy in New Orleans and committed to the city and the team according to sources with knowledge of his thinking Holiday is said to want to take the rest of the season to view how this team performs how the Pelicans can build upon winning 12 of their 18 games since December 23rd and how they can build down the road. Holiday's desire to remain in New Orleans coupled with Pelicans Executive Vice President David Griffin repeatedly vowing publicly that they do not intend to move their veterans unless there is a shift in player mindset. This would seem to signal that Holiday will stay put. The Pelicans have wanted to view this roster construction for an entire season. And the belief for now is that Griffin stays with that plan. At first, when the Pelicans started off the season on a 6-22 record, I would definitely say, yeah, you should totally punt on this team. In fact, I made many videos saying that they should punt on this roster and trade JJ Redick, trade Derek Favors, and trade Drew Holiday. But it seems like there is a possibility. They're four games back from the eighth seed from the Memphis Grizzlies, and there's a chance that they could actually make a push to the playoffs now that Zion Williamson's healthy and they have their entire team at full strength but this goes way deeper than trying to build a team for the playoffs guys this goes way way further it's about seeing what teammates you should surround zion with do drew holiday brandon ingram zion williamson and lonzo ball play well together if not who's the odd man out should they trade jj reddick is he you know does he not really fit in with the new orleans pelicans or is it best to play Zion at the center position, play Brandon Ingram at the power forward position, and then run some kind of weird small ball situation with Drew Holiday, JJ Redick, and Lonzo Ball all in, in that lineup as well? There's a lot of things that you could tinker with, especially if you're Alvin Gentry, who prioritizes small ball overall. Now, let me know in the comment section down below, do you think that the Pelicans should trade Drew Holiday or do you think that they should try to keep him and try to make this push for the playoffs? I personally think that they should try to make this push for the playoffs because, dude, playoff experience for Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, and Zion Williamson will just pay off so much down the future for their development. And speaking about the eighth-seeded Memphis Grizzlies, bro, there is nothing more fascinating to me than the Andre Iguodala situation. And... I'm going to give you an idea of what's going on. Pretty much earlier this, well, this past offseason, in order to acquire D'Angelo Russell, the Golden State Warriors had to trade Andre Gudala to the Memphis Grizzlies for pretty much nothing. And it was mainly a salary dump. And Andre Gudala didn't exactly make the best first impression with the Memphis Grizzlies. As a matter of fact, he was kind of a D-bag to them. According to Rick Buecher of Bleacher Report, Andre Gudala didn't exactly ingratiate himself with the Grizzlies. League sources said, after he spurned their request to join the team in training camp until they could work out a deal for him. So Andre Gudala pretty much came through and said, yo, guys, um, I'm not going to play for your team. I'm used to competing for championships. Your team probably isn't going to even make it to the playoffs. I'm 36 years old. I'm not trying to play for your team. Make a deal for me. And sat out of training camp. Didn't even show up. Which sucks because he would fit in with the Memphis Grizzlies so well right now. But anyway, some rival executives are convinced that the Grizzlies are not eager to do him any favors and have no intention of buying him out. Thereby allowing him to join the team of his choice. Especially when that team could end up being the Grizzlies first round opponent. We all know how badly Andre Gudala wants to go to the Lakers. It makes a lot of sense. The Lakers could happily use a piece like Andre Gudala, but the Grizzlies are currently the eighth seed and they don't want them releasing Andre Gudala to come back and bite them in the ass, which makes a lot of sense. And give I have to give them props because the Grizzlies apparently tried to trade Andre Gudala to the Milwaukee Bucks 
for a 2020 protected first round pick. And this is, of course, once again, according to Rick Bucher of Bleacher Report. And one league source says the Memphis Grizzlies offered Andre Gudala to the Milwaukee Bucks for the 2020 protected first round pick they acquired from Indiana in the deal that sent point guard Malcolm Brogdon to the Pacers last summer, while adding Andre Gudala's playmaking ability and his postseason pedigree and defense to the team with the league's best record is tantalizing. It would be a Rubik's Cubian challenge to construct a deal that would allow Milwaukee to absorb his $17.2 million contract. And for the most part, that's the biggest problem that the Memphis Grizzlies currently have. They have a great player who is, I don't know, 35 or 36 right now with a $17 million contract. Yeah, Andre Goodall is a great player but he's not $17 million contract good. Again, last season with the Warriors, he averaged 5.7 points, 3.7 rebounds, and 3.2 assists per game. He shot 50% from the field, 33% from three, and 58.2% from the free throw line. I am not going to uh, give a $17 million contract to that type of player. I don't want a $17 million contract player that only averages six points. I don't care how good of a defender he is or how much championship experience he has. That's just not smart. That money could be allocated towards other role players and we could see an even better return or the same return as Andre Gudala would have given us. And that's what I have for you guys today, man. Make sure you check out my video on microphone. If you are a NFL fan, I'm going to leave it in the pinned comment in the comment section down below. I'm your boy, The Flight Mike, and I'll catch you guys later.